Uh, good, good evening, everyone. This is Bobby Walker, and this is part two of our podcast series conversation. We'll talk about um, uh, conforming to this world. We're just talking about men issues and issues that we face. And if you made it to the end of the last part, we had some internet problems. We were talking about how God made man. Uh, and God made man from like Robert explained it well how we are spirit being beings first. Our spirits are in heaven with the Father. He sends our spirits to earth and assigns our gender and our sex. And there's a big delusion um with a lot of people where they say that even when I was when I was growing up, this was unheard of. That people think that we can uh change your sex or uh literally think that you can identify with uh, another sex or another gender and it be so. Uh, children knew the difference between a boy and a girl. You know what I'm saying? Male and female. Biologically, science understands what God has created and states that as so. But now the enemy has come in to delude and deceive people as if you can change what God has ordained and you cannot. And it, those people who feel this way have been deceived by the enemy you are what God made you to be. That's it. And any anybody, anything that tells you otherwise is of Satan and the kingdom of Satan. And he's trying to deceive you. Uh, you can't go by what you, you, you're feeling. Satan can get in your feelings, y'all. He can get in your mind and your head to make you think it's something that's outside of God's will. When you're outside of God's will, you're in trouble. To make you think or confuse you like Eve, he confused Eve. He got in her head. You know what I'm saying? As soon as Satan started talking to her, telling her something different than what God tell, told her, she should have rebuked that serpent. You lying, get away from me. But we start entertaining these thoughts. And Katy Perry says I, uh, in that song, like he said, the devil come to you and music, y'all, to deceive you. Tell me I kissed the girl and I liked it. Number one, you shouldn't have been kissing no girl. Number two, but you playing with fire, because your your flesh will like anything. Your flesh don't care. Your flesh is corrupt. Yeah. Your if you can you can you can kiss somebody of the same sex and like it because it's yeah. your flesh. Your flesh will have you smoke some coke, some crack and cocaine made with rat poison. You know it's got poison in it, but it'll chemically do something to your body that you know is detrimental. But it, because it's pleasurable, the devil loves put pleasure on sin. You know what I'm saying? Every sin that most sins are pleasurable in some way. And then so they get you to receive it. You know, yeah, guys, I, I just pray for those people who are deceived, not just them, because then the parents, we got some parents out there who their their mind is, is is warped because they believe the lies and they allow their children to do this. Because when we was growing up, if you was gonna do it, a lot of the kids uh knew it or they were confused, then then they, they left home and went off to college and came out the closet later. You know what I'm saying? When they I'm grown now, I can't, whatever, because they knew their parents wouldn't tolerate it. They knew it was not of God. Um, and a lot of sins, people do wait till they can get away from their parents, people who will enforce uh, the truth to them. And so now we got parents uh, who accept the lies of the enemy and will allow their children, they'll buy these clothes to the children, let the children go through the, the uh, uh, sex change operations and the hormone therapy. No, you need to bring your, your children to the house of God. You need to be praying of your children so they can be delivered. And, and, and the government is in, in, in it too. They made laws where uh, they try to facilitate it because if a child cannot, uh, the child does not have the uh, mental mental capacity to drive a car, to vote, to smoke, or drink, and even we, we, we do, or consent to sex, then how can you have the mental capacity to uh, alter your body, to uh, have your reproductive hormone, reproductive hormones uh, taken away from you, you don't have the mind to do that. Your mind, no, no, no. You, I, that's, it should be illegal. Actually, I feel that that should be illegal for uh, children to do that. Uh, once you grown, I still think it's wrong. Uh, but at least, not no child. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's so many things outside of God's will. I, when I minister, I, I talk to people, I say, are you living right? And then um, and they'll say, yes. I said, can I test you? He said, okay. I said, what about sex? And then I say, uh, well, there's this. I said, are you having sex? And I said, yeah, you know, that's outside of God's will. God says marry. I said, what about drugs? 
They say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I smoke marijuana. I do some drugs. I said, if you're not sick, you don't need any drugs. You know what I'm saying? So God has an order, and we have to do things his way. We have to do it his way. You be flying through these topics, man. I'm like, you need to slow down. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, like you said, we were talking about this on part one. And it was a very good discussion to where the internet conveniently went out. I don't think that was just the internet going out. That was a demon. Yeah. And the demon that you named was gender dysphoria. I think that's what you said. Well, that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a demon of confusion. Yeah, it is. That's a demon. It's not a, a diagnostic thing. You can diagnose it or something. It's still a demon called confusion. Because yeah. <laughs> we were talking about how me and you are spirits. Yeah. And we didn't have the right to choose male or female. That was God's choice. Yeah. And he put us in the male body. And anybody's opinion outside of that doesn't matter because that was his choice. Because yeah. he made these bodies, right? Yeah. And so when you talk about people being grown, it's a difference between being grown and playing God. Yeah, you're right. Two different things. But this world combines them. You grown when you get to choose. No. That's not biblical. If you're growing in the Bible, you continue to grow up in that space where he puts you. You're right. Your purpose, your destiny. So if he so if he put you in the boy body, grow up to be a man, the full maturity of it. Or if you're in the girl body, grow up to be a full mature woman. He didn't say you get now the right to change the ginger he put you in. You know? And so... Um, yeah, this world tells you you can do anything. Just do whatever you want to do, do it. But there are consequences. That's not, That's not biblical, though, Charles. Yeah, you're right. They tell now, you. It that. doesn't say there's consequences. You're going too fast. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say there's consequences for what you choose. Right? But that's what the world is. The world is do what you want, don't care about the consequences, complain about the consequences, even though you did it to yourself. The Bible says, count the full cost before you make a decision. What? What you said now? The world say, oh, okay, say it again. I'm going too fast. The Bible says, count up the cost before you make a decision. Yeah. The world says, oh, just make a decision right now based off your feelings. How do you feel? Well, I feel like a girl. But Robert, you got a full beard on, brother. Mm -hmm. Now, hold up. Your feelings? Yes. Anybody can have feelings. But look, count up the cost. Huh, my muscles are bigger than the girl. My body's bigger than the girl. I have a penis. What? I got a full beard. Look at that. My feelings don't change this. Thank you. My penis. My body size. The deepness of my voice. Right? So if I count up the cost, oh, brother, I must be a guy. I'm grown. Yeah, I'm, I'm 39. That don't mean I play God. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. This world says I can. The Bible says I cannot. Mm -hmm. So we as men, we have to realize that the world will push us into things mm -hmm. just because we feel like it. If you're a man, you count the cost. Yeah. Is this a real man? A man with, who has sense about himself? Well, think about it. Let me think about it. I'm going to get back to you in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. Also think and I struggle with that. I, I would uh, people please to want to please people, you know. Yeah, I could do that. Not fully count up the cost. Uh, not be able to meet the things I said because I was just trying to please people. That's the world. I'm trying to prove myself. Can nobody prove? God put me here. He made me a male. He made me in Mississippi. This is where I am. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, I'm like, sorry, it's not my choice. Yeah. Right? Too many of us men. We try to prove ourselves when we're already proven. Yeah. You're right. And we can get that. Yeah. So we get into all kinds of stuff to yeah. try to prove ourselves. Have a sex before you're ready. We talked about that part one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, using our muscles to force people to respect us. But we just live from a place of self respect. You know what I'm saying? Make women uh, obedient to us instead of just being a loving male. And women will naturally submit to us. The good ones anyway. The good ones with their mind, right? Because right? that's on both sides. So yeah, this thin line of being a male. Do I want to be a worldly male? 
or a godly male and knowing there's a difference, that's a thin line. I think we also have to understand a prize. We have to understand the um, the wisdom of God, reverence God's wisdom and his will and rejoice in it. Um, mm -hmm. That God's will is right. And God's will is good. Uh, it's good to wait to marry. It's good to raise your children. That's another issue. I mean, uh, like to uh, make babies, not take care of babies. Um, it's good to uh, do all the things that the Bible says, and I want that. That that's right. That if Bill Gates, um, all these worldly people who make money, and they write these books and they have these uh, how to be successful and how to get rich, all people run to buy these books because they value these people's wisdom. But what about the wisdom of God? What about the wisdom that's in the book of Proverbs? What about the wisdom that's throughout the Bible? We have to people have to learn to value that. that the Bible is good. Now, even that, that's a spiritual attack because it, it, the Bible will always uh, be opposed by Satan because his spirit and his life is leading us to eternal salvation and good things. But we have to learn to reverence the things of God because it's God's will for our life. Yeah. You know, and the devil can keep having you not read your Bible, but go buy something from uh, Elon Musk, who, you know what I'm saying, is not saved, does not have the truth in him. Or anybody, even at one point in time, people were all about Jay Z. What is good about Jay Z? He, he, I mean, even on Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey Prize, he put his book uh, and talked and talk about how he started selling drugs at age 13 and, and tell this story of how he went from that to now he's this rap mogul. Uh, brother, there's nothing good about selling drugs, right? Nothing good about selling drugs at age 13. There's nothing mm -hmm. good about the rap, and rap is it's a form of music, that's, that's it. But the rap that he 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 talks about, uh, even mocks God in his music. There's nothing good about Jay Z. If he, there's nothing he can write that I ever will want to read, mm -hmm. because it does not come from the standpoint of the truth, right? Or God's truth. There's nothing good he does. If you if you're a drug dealer, I don't. There's nothing you have to tell me about that life. If you ran ran the women, I don't find that attractive. I don't find that as a, a, a a behavior that I am trying to learn to adapt into my life. Uh, right. Actually, you know, as I was watching a, a clip on YouTube um, by Apostle Brian Meadows, he's from Embassy Church in Atlanta, and he said, um, too many even church people have, they keep throwing clout about what they used to do. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? As a man. Well, I used to have, I used to have 18 women. Okay, well, we don't want to do that no more. How long can you pray? You know what I'm saying? What about the things of God? How much of the Bible do you read? What has God revealed to you about life? Or what's the word that God has spoken to you? Uh, we have to learn to seek those things, seek God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, because that, that wisdom from the world, what we can do in the world, it's done. Paul said, I count it all as done. Paul, even Paul. Paul was a doctor. He, he right. went to school. He learned this and he learned that he thought he was doing what's right. Then he met Jesus and, and feel like, oh, dog, huh? He said, you're kicking against the priest. You're fighting me. Everything you've been taught in the world is against me. And Jesus had mercy on him because God had a plan for his life. Now, he had to suffer for the things he did wrong, but God knew he did it ignorantly. And said, so, you know what? I got to right. punish him. But uh calling him, so I'm going to send him to some places that he had to go to suffer some things as a minister that other people wouldn't, but it would be for my glory. But we have to put aside the things of the world, even how we communicate with people. Some people Used to being in the game. Yeah. You know, go ahead. It's like, see, you want to say something? Go ahead. Going too fast. Hey, well, that's me. Go I'm ahead. by this word, but that's the key to everything. The key word that you said was ignorance. Yeah. The problem that men have is that we're ignorant. You know, this is a series about things men go through. Why Why do we go through certain things? It's, it's ignorance. We don't know that there's two versions of what manhood is. And we don't know that we have to pick a side. And we may have already not knowing that we picked a side. Right? Yeah. And so God, because he knows that we're limited in certain knowledge, he will have mercy on us in areas, but still make us sometimes go through things because of what we sown, like you talked about Paul. You know, Paul thought he was doing God's will yeah. until he met God. 
who had to refresh <laughs> who he was to him. It was like, oh, okay, I okay, I apologize. And then he changed. I like how God changes people's names too to give them a second chance. Abram to Abraham, Saul to Paul, you know, uh, Simon to Peter. He's uh, Jacob to uh, Israel. Jacob to Israel, yes. He didn't change the gender. Yes, can't change the gender. Because that was his will. But I'll change your name because you were once this kind of man. But I'm changing you to that kind of man. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. In all four cases, it was ignorance. Yeah. They knew a version of God. Even the world, men, world, men, uh, worldly men have an idea of who God is. They do. Until they meet the real <laughs> God. And even the Bible says he turns you into a whole new creation. Yeah. And that's what that's what that symbolizes. Simon into Peter, mm -hmm. Abram into Abraham. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we gotta so, submit ourselves. We gotta submit ourselves to right. God. But once once you get renewed, because it's like, uh, hey, have you ever um got the instruction to a, uh something that you're supposed to fix, and and then you said, no, I can do it myself. And some told you, no, you you follow the instruction. I, I can do it myself. And you do some of it. I mean, you can you can put column A to nut B. But once you finish it, you don't. You got a bag full of nuts. I'm like, what are you saying? <laughs> like, it's cool. exactly. And it, it 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 can stand up, but it's gonna wobble. It's gonna fall down. You can build right. a house on the sand. You built the house, but the sand is gonna sink. So we do so Come much on. of that. That's what I think about you as a father, you just, uh, Abraham. Um, God wants us to be there. as fathers. Teach our sons His word and His will and how to mm -hmm. live life. He don't want us to have to go through the process that we learn the world away. And they have to break that off because when that stuff is deep, really rooted in you, sometimes that's hard to break that that's stuff off. Something. The world will say you can do it on your own. If you're a real man, do it on your own. Yeah. Self made. Yeah, self made. Right there, you know, that's the biggest self -made. Lie. Sorry, that's not how do I put it. The world teaches self made. The Bible teaches many counselors. Come on now. Come on now. Iron sharpens iron. Yes. You want to be a real man? Get around real men. Yes. And they will turn you into that yes. with God's help. Yeah, but some of us are not be walking God. Go ahead. Yeah, but some of us, uh, even especially, come on, just talking about it in the black culture. Uh, oh yeah, that's don't have that's no me real myself. Men. Okay. So I got to the end. That's what I found out. You heard that song before? It's by Beyonce. <laughs> it's not in the book. It's in the song. Me, myself, and I, Lil Boosie, I N D E P E N D, independent women. This is how the this is how Lucifer uses music to train you to be non biblical, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think it's a good thing as far as um, no fathers, so you don't have anyone to model manhood the right way, righteous manhood. Mm -hmm. And then so many young people are uh, seduced by the culture. Mm. To, and everyone in the culture is uh, ungodly. Uh, right, and, and seduced. Then, yeah, seduced, uh, drawn in. You got to be like, you want to be, mm -hmm. you want to be cool. You want to be hip. Uh, mm -hmm. So you want to do everything that they're doing. And they're doing ungodly, worldly things. But you're drawn in because that's. I want to fit in because you don't know your identity as a son of the most high God. Mm -hmm. and you don't have to uh, bow down to nobody. Let them conform to who you are. So mm -hmm. I wear my pants down, although where my privates are showing, although it don't make a bit of sense, but that's what everyone else is doing. And, and I curse because, hey, that's what everybody, even these you have these new uh, words that come about. On fleet one time, one year, this is something else. I ain't never knew Jonah because it, it's, it's all, it's, it's what the world does. Uh, is it, it go? It comes and it goes, but you don't have a model of what godly manhood is. You don't have mm -hmm. godly men around you um, that are doing righteous, that are making good decisions. So you 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 go with the flow. You go with the men, the godly, the, the figures that are are there, and that people are led astray. And so I think uh, I, I I I agree for so many young people. Well, I see it. I see young brothers walking the streets, and it grieves me. Why aren't you in school? Yeah. Oh, uh, why are you smoking? Why, why are you, you begging people to do it? You know what I'm saying? 
because it's with everyone and they don't have any guidance. Uh, at least um, of my parents were divorced, but it was some some foundational things that my dad taught. Me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it's some, like right now, my dad his view on life. I I stand on that. Uh, my dad had no, had no problem with me going to churches and learning about God. Even then, if my dad did something wrong, we in the dead time where people do sin openly. You know what I'm saying? You go to the people smoking marijuana or just walking down the street. You know what I'm saying? Um, my dad, if he was doing something like it's drinking or smoking, he didn't even want to do that around nobody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was... Around us. You know what I'm saying? Because he knew that was wrong. And um, I don't even remember him doing too much drinking. Uh, at one point in time, he smoked, but he stopped that. But you know, I'm talking about the generations. You know, I don't know. It's just it's so bad. But um, sin is wrong. There's some righteousness and godliness. We don't hear too much about that, especially in uh, media and the culture. Yeah. And I don't even, as far as music, I don't even. If it's if it's not by, if it's not gospel or Christian, I don't listen to it. I've been made that commitment that I don't listen to world of music because it is it, prime example. But how you can struggle. Uh, there is a song. I think it's by Chris Brown. And okay, how Satan would take something that is evil and ungodly that God's dislikes, and with music wrap it so that it sounds and seems beautiful. There's a, there's a song he's singing and he sings using his voice and he sings it in a in a way that sounds so good. Mm-hmm. The words, just the way he wraps that melody together. But then you break down and look at the words that he's singing. He's talking about straight sex. S-E-X. Literally. And then I looked up, uh, I mean, I, I watched a video. It was a, it's, I'm passing the YouTube pass the pass. I see this guy singing. He's He was in a movie. Oh, okay, let me see who this actor is. And he's singing, I didn't know you sang. So I listened to what he's singing. And he's singing a Chris Brown song. And but he's singing straight, he's talking about straight intercourse, straight fornication. You know what I'm saying? And then straight lust. And there's nothing good about it. You know what I'm saying? And it seems like even music, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. Very yeah. seldom do you see in music right now an example of a god like, in the world of a man of a Husband, father of one woman, or the, the children in his family, is he singing about something positive? Only mm-hmm. person I know of, one of two people, uh, maybe that his music may be somewhat clean, is John Legend. You know what I'm saying? He's not new, though. I know he's not new, but I mean, it's somewhat. I've seen, he, I think one time he had a song that I, I was like, why are you doing that, John? But it's about love. Just about love. We were yeah. talking about love music and relationship music or just life music. Yeah. Most of this is, is trash. It is trash. And it transfers into your real life. And you're not, now your life becomes trash. Yeah. Why, and then you wonder why your life's trash. The influences. You got to have positive influences. Um, you mentioned many counselors. Bible does talk about that. Um, the multitude of counsels, counsels, there's wisdom in the multitude of counsels. And in the Old Testament, that um, even young people would have a, uh, I think they call it was an internship, or it was not an internship, but um, I guess they were, um, apprentice. it was a carpenter. Huh? Apprenticeship. An apprenticeship. You had an apprenticeship to learn a trade, and you had to be under Robert. As Robert mm-hmm. taught and trained, you had to submit yourself to his wisdom to learn how to use his trade. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And a lot of women, men these days, uh, don't want to submit to someone else. It's like a uh, like alpha, alpha, alpha. You know, they are against. No, nah, you don't tell me what to do. You know, Personal. and, and a generation of guys who don't want to go to college, or they have they're brilliant, don't want anyone to tell them what to do. Uh, I, I've known people who were broke, did not have a job. I said, well, you ever thought about McDonald's? McDonald's kind. To I, I'd rather sell drugs in the street than uh uh uh, uh, uh than to go to McDonald's, flip flip hamburgers. You what? You mean you broke, but you you won't go. You know, it's just you know, it's just like it's so many things that we face, but we have to go back to the Bible. Even to me, for me, if it's in the Bible, I'm willing to say if they did it in the Bible, I can do it. Prime example: arranged marriage. Arranged marriage is something they do in Indian culture, Asian culture. It's not an American thing. Uh, so all my life, I've never known, you know, that's interesting. Ooh, what do you mean your parents chose your wife? And there was a point in time I said, I, I could never have done that. But then 
it came to my mind, oh, but that's in the Bible. Like in the Old Testament, literally the parents would literally go choose a wife for their sons. So I'm like, okay, if and they and they, they met this person and fell in love with it, lived a long, happy life with this person. So now I'm up to what we're doing nowadays, though, Charles. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> you go choose just who you want. I can't be with them three days, three years. You know, so I can submit myself to God's will because I, even if it's something foreign and I yeah. don't understand it quite, but if it worked in the Bible, then. And working today, because like you said, other countries still do that today. So if it's still working, then maybe there is something too. Yeah, we got, but you got to be, are you willing to submit to what they do in the Bible? Like, submit. Yes. yes. That's what it comes down to. Will you be worldly or will you be biblical? You know? And the, when you tally it up, the reason why men go through certain things because they live too much on the world side and not enough on the Bible side. Yeah. Because the uh, Bible says that the wind hits all houses. Talked about house built on the sand, house built on the rock. You talked about that. The wind blew on both of them. But one fell because it was in the world. The other one stood because it was on the rock. Jesus Christ. So, time after time, when I hear people go through things, most of them, not every of because Christians go through things too. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about if you tally up the fullness of the whole story of the person's life, it's because they chose the world over, over God. You know, and that's number one problem for me, in my opinion. So this is a full series, but it's good to start off with. Which side are you going to be on? Yeah. Let's start there. And if we can start there, then the next couple series we talk about, okay. All right. Maybe the reason why you're going through so much, because you're on the wrong side. Yeah. And, you know, men don't talk about these issues. So that's another reason why we go through so much. Like right now, what me and you doing? We don't really talk about that as, you know, the world doesn't do that. <laughs> Counseling is like a curse word. Independence is a curse word. I'm sorry. Uh, what's it called? Uh, submission. Submission is a curse word to the world. Counseling is a curse word to the world. What do you mean I need counseling? I'm fine. Yeah. I just need some weed. Give me some drink. I'll be high. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. You need to go talk to somebody. I got it. I'm good. Yeah. You know and if, like you say, I'm self made and I can handle all things and ain't nothing wrong with me. I don't need any advice from anybody else. Uh, I don't need no help. But uh, even that you, I think about you and when I met you at Victory and the series they were doing at the time, Bob was, was good. You need some godly, not godly wisdom. You don't need nobody to be around nobody to gonna tell you something outside of God's will. Uh, but someone who can hear from heaven, someone who has the wisdom of the word, someone you know who has the love of God in you, them, because if they have the love of God in them, then they'll love you. And they're going to tell you wisdom. They're going to say, Charles, son, hey, brother, I love you, but you're wrong, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you're not thinking right. So let me help you. Or um, mm -hmm. they allow you, you to give them wisdom and mm -hmm. words for the Lord as well. Bob, like you said, iron sharpens iron. But you got to have the right influences in your life because there will be people who say they're your friends and will tell you the things that outside of God's will. All right. But God, the Bible does tell you how do you know if they're real or not? Look at their fruit. Yeah. What side did they choose? And from that point, make your decision. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's good. It's good to talk about stuff like this because we don't normally in the world. But we're called out of the world, so we talk about stuff like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. God has everything that we need. Uh, the world doesn't have anything good to offer to us. Uh, but we Long should like Huh? Long term. Yeah. It's like what the world offers is temporarily pleasurable. Yeah. It temporarily fills you. I feel better today. Tomorrow, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the uh the pleasure. Nine of sin, now, we're not gonna talk about that. The Go pleasure ahead. of sin lasts for just a season. 
know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, but then you can, you know, if you come to yourself, uh, you realize, oh, you know, this ain't this ain't working. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, so we just thank God for the opportunity to talk about, huh? So that's what trials are for. Yeah. Well, I, I pray that number one, that people take heed to the wisdom of the word before you go through the negative experience. Some people say, well, experience is the best teacher. Now, God don't want you to learn to go through something and you've rejected the wisdom of God. So now you got to get, get your butt whooped. You know what I'm saying? You got to suffer. You had to, you get, have three, four babies out of wedlock and go through all that to realize maybe I should sit down somewhere or do it God's way. He wants you to take heed to the wisdom of the word first. Then some people do. They go through experience and they learn. But uh, God's wisdom is there for us. Uh, and iron ship is iron. And uh, I appreciate you, Rob. We, you know, we only got about a few more minutes left. But um, thank God for the opportunity to talk on some issues. If anyone's seeing this video, if you would like to talk on any particular issue in the Bible, in the world, uh, hit me up. Everybody knows my phone number. It's, it's uh, in the uh, description. Um, you can put it in the comments. We, we can talk about it. Uh, Robert has his own YouTube channel, Bonded by Christ. He does something every day. Uh, blow his channel up. Like and subscribe. He has some good stuff. He's he's an awesome, humble man of God. Actually, uh, he's a father. He's he's married, and he's a father of um, eight five boys. Five boys. So, um, and I even me that that's one of the things why I like about Robert so much because I watched him. Uh, just that. Uh, and whenever I saw Robert at church, he was with his wife. He had his sons with him. His sons were dressed nice. He was dressed in a suit and a tie. Uh, his sons looked like somebody. They looked like a royal family, like princes. Um, uh, he was very humble. He wasn't arrogant. He wasn't proud. He didn't think I'm all this and all that. But he had a genuine, like David, genuine something, a spirit, an excellent spirit within him that drew you to him and wanted you to make you like him. Some people want to act as if I'm all that and I should be leading and you should follow me. Uh, but that wasn't, you know, Rob. And uh, I really appreciate that. And so we're going to have him on uh, some more and some other men of God. Um, women of God, if you want to come on, hey, hey, come on. You know, it's all about learning, growing, talking. Um, and um, that's about it. So I hope you guys watch both parts of this uh um segment and uh we'll see you again later god bless you